Amy. And Gemma. From Play to Learn Preschool. And we are here this afternoon to share some ideas for circle time. The other day when we were sharing our thematic blue boxes with you, we had opened up the apple box and the fall box. People were commenting, hey, can you show us more about those circle time activities? So, we thought we'd demonstrate a few of them. I'm going to be the camera person because I'm not singing the Wiggly Worm. She doesn't want to sing the Wiggly Worm song. No. So, Miss Gemma is going to be the cameraman. And we actually thought we'd flip the camera around because otherwise, the way that the Facebook Live video, the camera works, um, everything will appear as a mirror image. See, look what happens when we're on the selfie cam. Everything is backwards. All the numbers are backwards. And so we thought if Gemma came around to the back, and then it would be um, the right direction for you. Okay. I'm not so, a, I don't know how good my camera is. So watch. Oh, I had to practice. You have to decide, is the camera better than your singing, or the singing is better than your camera skills? <laughs> so, know. okay. So here we go. Hang with us. Yeah. All right. Okay, are we on? See, now I have no idea what's going on. We are on. Oh, oh, there we go. Hi. Hey. Hi. Is that good? Yes. Okay, so I'm just in this blind now. I can't see any of your comments. Gemma's going to read them to me. I'm going to try. And, um, I'm good? Yeah. Okay. So we've got a couple of uh, tips first before I give you an example of some circle time activities. And the first tip that I have for you is that we always try to make circle time activities active because that's the word right activities so whenever we're planning circle time we try to think like, what is the teacher doing but more importantly what are the kids doing what are they touching what are they um, how are they moving what are they saying how are they active in the circle time activity so that's first that the circle time activity has to be active and second, I think it's so important that we really pay attention to the um, age and attention span of the kids. We use as a rule of thumb one to two minutes per year of their age, which means if you have two-year-olds, that their circle time might only be two to four minutes. For us with our three-year-olds, we start with three or four minutes, and our goal by the end of the year, when they've turned four, is eight minutes. So we build up that time throughout the year. Right now with our pre-K students, they're four here at the beginning of the year. So we go between, they're really good for about five minutes, four to five minutes. And then by the end of the year when they're five, we'll have a 10 minute circle time. Last week I was explaining how we do our name songs at the beginning for literacy and it's just a morning welcome and warm up. But then we have a second circle time midway through the day when we do something thematic. So that's what I'm gonna share with you now are, how many examples did we get out? Like six different circle time lessons that we do with our own kids that we think would be really easy for you to do with your kids too. So hopefully you can get one or two ideas to use with your own class. Are we good? Yes. Okay. One of our favorite circle time activities is like a hiding game. We have lots of different versions of this where we hide things and ask the students to close their eyes and try to figure out what we're doing. And the one I'm going to share with you is that Wiggly Worm. It's a little poem um, that I wrote, and it's called, it goes, Wiggly Little Worm, here's that little guy, is crawling on the ground, under which apple will he be found, or will it be found? And so what we do, can you guys see the table? Okay, so what we have spread out here are eight different apples, and they're numbered, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and I'll introduce that to the students and have them count. And we'll talk about how the eight apples are different colors. We've got a red, an orange, you know, we talk about that. Just for a minute. And in rainbow order. Of course it's in rainbow order. Jamie likes rainbow order. I do like rainbow order. <laughs> and so then what I'll ask the students to do is, boys and girls, close your eyes really quickly. Close them, close them, close them. And I hide the worm and I say, open your eyes. Who would like to guess where the worm is hiding? Of course, not. oh, me, 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 I wanna guess. And so Susie will say, I think he's under the orange number two. And we'll look, oh, no worm. Who wants to guess next? And Johnny will say, I think he's under green number four. No worm. And then um, little Sarah will say, I know, I want to guess blue number six. And so when we open it up, oh, there's the worm. 
and they all get so excited. We found the worm, and we just play that again. It's really good for transition times too, um, when you only have a few minutes. You know, if you're waiting for dismissal, because it can go as long as you want it to go, or as quickly as you need it to go. So this is the first one. If you don't have this printable, it's in my apple unit. But if you don't have it, you could just draw apples on different colored paper and put numbers on them and cut out a little brown worm. Um, easy enough. Okay. Is anybody watching? Are there any questions? Yes, no questions. No questions yet. Okay. Just some Hi, everybody. Thank you. Okay. So that's activity number one. Hide something and have them use um, guessing skills and also work on color and number identification. Um, so the second one that I'm going to show you is something that we try to do with every unit no matter what and that is a sensory activity. So if we're studying apples, probably one of the very first circle times that we'll do is just bring a basket of apples, make sure that everybody has one, and we'll just talk about how we can use our senses to explore the apple. Um, and so we'll just, especially in the fall, talk them through. Let's look at the apples. What do you see with your eyes? And of course they all have one so they're excited. And if it's apples, I'll have to say, don't eat it yet. Um, you know, and then let's feel it with our fingers and what do you feel? Um, what do you notice is different you know, about the apple? This one has a stem and this one doesn't. Um, can you smell it? Can you hear it? Um, and then it, maybe later we'll say we'll taste them at some time. But a sensory activity, if you're studying fall, if it's passing around acorns and pine cones, or if you're studying winter and you bring in a bucket of snow or some ice cubes, those are all really good activities for preschoolers. They're involved because they're using their senses and um, it, again, can be as quick as you need it to be or as long as your students will tolerate no more than about two minutes per year at their age. So use a sensory experience is another fun one. Um, here's another one of my favorites and we, use, we also use this for every unit no matter what. I bring out this tray covered with a bandana and they get so excited about what in the world could be under here. And so I'll show them. Um, boys and girls, on this tray, I have lots of things that have to do with, and if we've been studying fall, they'll probably say, look, they're all fall things. And we'll talk about what I have. There's a little pumpkin. This one, I put a pine cone, some corn, a flower, an apple and a leaf. We might even count how many things are on the tray. One, two, three, four, five, six. We could say there's two orange things, two red things, and two brown things. And I'm trying to get them to think about how they can remember all of the things on this tray. Because the game is, again, we'll have them close their eyes, but it's not as important if they peek because I cover it up with a bandana, and I'll say, open your eyes. Which thing is missing from my tray? It's, you know, I might give them a clue. It's something here, it's something round, it's something red. And they can all shout out. They don't have to sit and be quiet and take turns. They can all shout out, oh, it's the apple. I said, you're so smart, let's try it again. Cover it up, close your eyes, and I'll take something away. What's missing from the tray? And if they can't figure it out, I'll say, you know, let's ask a friend or I'll give you a clue. Do you want a, you know, do you want a clue? It's something brown. And then they guess, oh, I think it was the pine cone. And this is really good for their concentration, for their memory skills. And I can put this tray together. So I don't like to plan for it's a bummer if you have to plan like 30 minutes for a five minute activity, right? So I can put a tray like this together in under a minute. I just grab my tray or my pie pan or whatever, I run around the room and get at the beginning of the year four or five things. And then by the end of the year, I can have six or seven or we've had classes that get so good at it. They could even have like eight things on the tray. And I just gather things up, cover it up with a bandana and we play this memory tray game. So this is an easy one to put together. We good? Gemma's making faces at me. I'm not sure how to interpret no, I'm, just, I'm just reading all of it. Okay. It's weird not to be able to see what we're doing. Like, I feel like... Someone... You would tell me if I had, like, something in my teeth. Right? Someone has said they're going to be doing it tomorrow with spring items. And I can oh, are only you? assume they're from Australia. Australia or New Zealand. Hi there! 
We definitely want to come visit them. Yeah. We're trying to figure out how we can work that out. Yes, I know. Okay, can you pan to the um, pocket chart? Yes. Okay, okay so here's one. another one. Camera skills. And the singing that she wanted to miss out on. So you better do a good job on the camera. So this is um, a song to the tune of Bingo. We like to do it with Apple, we'll do it with water, W-A-T-E-R, we'll do it with Santa. And it's a fun way to practice um, their letters. So this one says, um, again, this is from my Apple unit, but you could just write that. South Africa? That's very cool. This is so cool. How cool is this? Hello in South Africa. That's so cool. Okay, um, so this one, you could just write the letters on a, on a piece of paper if you didn't want to use the unit. But the song goes like this. I'm not singing it. Jamie, take it away. I feel like we should try to do one Facebook Live video where I don't sing. <laughs> Just for the sake of the people who are watching. Okay, it says, I like a fruit that's red and sweet, and apple is its name. O A P P L E. A P P L E. A P P L E. And apple is its name. O. And then I tell the boys and girls, we're gonna cover up this first letter. What's the first letter? It's A, okay. And then this time, instead of saying A, P, P, L, E, we'll say crunch. I like a fruit that's red and sweet, and apple is its name. Oh, crunch, P, P, L, E, crunch, P, P, L, E, like that. And then the second time, we'll put two crunches with a little worm, and the kids will say crunch, crunch, P, L, E. They think it's so much fun. They're practicing the letters, and then a lot of our four and five girls will go home and say, I know how to spell apple. It's A-P-P-L-E, which is just a fun little way um, for them to participate. Someone has a question. Yes, I'm ready for the question. Um, yes, Mira, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Um, she would like to know if we sing before we start with activities. We sing all the time. Um, example, good morning song, weather song. We sing before we sing. We sing all the time, but we sing our good morning song. We, we sing don't the good morning do weather song. We don't have a weather song. No. Um, we do the good morning song first thing in the morning. Um, if I'm understanding the question right, and then depending on what the thematic. Sometimes we'll sing for that. Sometimes we will not sing. Depending on what the activity is, we'll sing or we won't sing in the middle. So, okay. You ready for the last one? Oh no, there's two more. That was only number four. One, two, three, four. Okay, two more. Or am I in? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> she really? says, Oh no. <laughs> I don't have to be in. You can just do it off. Not very good at this. Um, so another thing that we really like to do is find a finger play or um, some kind of a little poem that the kids can do. And again, keeping in mind that we want it to be an activity and not a passivity where they just sit. We want to find ways that they can participate. So you're probably familiar with the little poem, um, Two Red Apples. And we like to do that and invite the kids to participate. Rather than just even holding their hands up, we'll give them two little apple counters or we'll make red cutouts of the apples and we'll give two for each child. And then they can sing the song. Way up high in the apple tree, two red apples smiled at me. I shook the tree as hard as I could. And then they drop them. Down came the apples, mmm, they were good and they love to hold onto their apples and then drop them. This is a good one if you have two-year-olds who might not have the language skills to participate with you. So you can give them something to hold and do nearing you and they think it's so funny. Do it again, we wanna drop our apples. So we put them up high in the apple tree and shake it and they drop them. Um, so simple, but it's getting them to follow directions and participate and hopefully develop their language skills too. Is that good? We're good? Okay. There's all sorts of people joining us. Hi, everybody. Texas and Texas? North Carolina. Hi, North Carolina. That's close. Um, Hi. It's so fun to see people from all over the world and the country. There have been a lot of English people, too. Jenna's got a lot of friends across the pond. Hi, Jenna. Everyone's here. All right. And then the last one that I want to share with you is sorting. So sorting is a really important skill for our preschoolers. And it's one we try to do with every unit also. So if we're studying spring, for example, down South Africa, we might have a basket of clothes and we would sort them. Is this something you could wear in the spring or is it something you wear in the summer? Um, if we're studying 
farm, I might pull out all of my plastic animals and we'll sort them. Are these animals that live on the farm or don't live on the farm? So I just pulled an example that we had out. Um, we're studying letters, of course, and so far we've learned the letter T and the letter F. This is a little alphabet soup game from Learning Resources, but you could use your own, just even a T and an F down on the carpet. And I give every student a picture. You know, I'll just pass them around. And so every student has a picture. And then they hold up their picture. So this is a fence. And they just have to sort it. Does fence start with F or does it start with T? T, -t, -t. And so they say, oh, it goes with F. And they put it in the can. Um, what about fish? Does it start with F or does it start with T? And the kids will say, fish, it starts with F. Um, what about tiger? T -t -t -t. Oh, it starts with a T. So anytime you can give them each a piece and work on sorting together, we did it the first week of school with, is that a good choice to make as far as behavior or bad choice? Um, we do it with the seasons, we do it with clothes, we do it with, like I said, animals. Um, with transportation, we might sort wheels or no wheels, um, or we'll sort into three categories. Is it in the air, on the ground, or in the sea? Anytime you can get students to sort, it's really good for their cognitive skills. So that's about it. Um, those are our tips and tricks for circle time. If you are local here in Virginia, I'm doing a full three hour workshop on Saturday about how to run an effective circle time. It's free. All of the classes that I offer on Saturdays are free. So if you are local, message me and I'll give you some more information about, you can find my email on my blog. Um, but leave me a message and I will be happy to tell you how to sign up for those free classes. If you're not local, stay tuned because Gem and I will be back on Facebook every afternoon with tips. Um, I just had a question. A question that, uh, someone is working with two-year-olds. Yes, two-year-olds. They only learn one letter at a time. Right. So would we still recommend doing the apps? I still think you can do it because the students, even if we've, we haven't taught all four of these letters to our students, um, but they can still sing along. So I went to college in the 90s where we studied whole language, of course, so that tends to be how I, um, how I think. But there's no reason why you couldn't sing the apple song if you've only taught the A. They could still learn the other letters in context of the word apple, um, even if you haven't explicitly taught the other letters. Just like they might know the other letters of their name, even if you haven't explicitly taught them. Um, so yes, of course, I would still sing. This might be a little bit tough for twos, I would stick to something like the finger plays, the memory tray, and I would only put three items maybe on the memory tray. The sensory experiences are really good for two-year-olds. But keep in mind when we're thinking one to two minutes per year of their age, that two-year-olds then we're expecting them to be participating or possibly participating for two to three minutes. And that doesn't mean sit crisscross applesauce in the circle with your hands folded. It means doing whatever you're asking them to do just for a few minutes. So I think it's really important for teachers that we keep our expectations on on tap, you know, on target with our students' attention spans. So good question. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Or the camera lady. <laughs> I don't know that is or not. All right. So that's all we have for you this afternoon. Tomorrow we're going to talk about how we work with the names with our youngest students, so our three-year-olds, um, how we do their morning work or their arrival activity and set up name activities for them. So I'm going to show you what we have set up for them. And Friday will be a surprise. We haven't decided yet. We've got lots of people asking about our schedule. We wanted to share with you about how we teach them to greet us in the morning. Um, so we've got lots of different things, and we'll let you know tomorrow. Have a great afternoon. Bye, everybody. Bye.